Outgoing Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta announced a landmark decision this week, lifting the ban on women in combat. Panetta's decision opens thousands of jobs to women already serving in the military and has implications in every state. I spoke with Oklahoma Secretary of Military and Veterans Affairs Major General Rita Aragon about the decision. General Aragon, as a practical matter, what does Secretary Panetta's decision do? Uh, virtually nothing, except open discussion again. Um, he has put caveats in place that says there will be exemptions granted to certain groups and organizations, meaning SEALs, Special Forces, um, ground combat teams. Was this an announcement a surprise? Uh, it did seem to come out of nowhere, except that uh, Secretary Panetta is uh, getting ready to uh, leave the post and they'll have a new secretary. I, I think it is something that he aspired to be able to change. I do believe that, but I, I can't see that what has happened is going to cause a great deal of change. So that mattered on the timing. How do you see this being implemented? Um, well, having served many years and knowing how um, uh, policies are built to fit whatever the situation is at the moment, I think what will happen is what's happening right now. Women are actually, and have been, serving in combat frontline jobs uh, for the last eight to ten years because it was necessary for the mission accomplishment. And that's what we have to come back to all the time and say, it isn't a matter that girls want to be tough or girls want this opportunity for a job. It is about what is best in the nation's best interest. If they didn't have females to examine females in a uh, culture where men could not touch them, uh, we know that, that um, harm might come to other troops. And so it was, it was for the, the real reason was for the necessity of the war engagement that we were in. So this rescinds the ban that had been in effect since 1994, but women have been in combat situations, they've been wounded, they've died That's for right. years. Since, actually since 2002, um, there were women Marines that went along with the uh, uh, contingent groups that walked in. Uh, there were Army females who carried weapons, wore the uh, body armor and went door to door because they had to be able to be there for the women that were inside. Certainly women have been on the gates guarding uh, posts for uh, Americans because again they had to have someone there who could filter the females, uh, Muslims, who came through. Will the branches of the service have to make some changes as a result of this or is it really just uh, cosmetic? My opinion would be that it's more cosmetic than anything. There have been great accommodations made in the last 10 years. The Navy now has women serving on uh, surface and subsurface warfare uh, vessels that 20 years ago or 15 years ago, maybe 10 years ago, uh, were told, well, they can't accommodate that. It's too small a space. You can't put women in that kind of, and they're doing it very successfully. The Air Force has every career field open to women other than special ops. And the truth is, when the mission itself requires whatever talents or abilities or characteristics are needed, that's when the door will open. And women have stepped through and said, okay, I didn't get the same training that men had, but if I'm needed, absolutely I will go, which any good military member is going to say. Raise their hand, salute smartly, and say, if this is in the best interest of the nation, that's what I'm here for. What does this decision mean in providing equal opportunity for women so that women will be perceived as equals in the service? I think it does, it, it opens the dialogue. It again brings up the issue of why can't they? Why aren't they? Is it in the nation's best interest? Is it in a military branch's best interest? Um, it really comes back to the two ground groups particularly, Marine, Infantry, Army infantry, those guys who go knock down doors, may sleep out in foxholes for weeks at a time. And the truth is, it should be based on capability. Not everyone who wants to be a SEAL can make it. Not everyone who wants to be special operations can make it. Not everybody who wants to be a jet fighter pilot makes it. It should be based on capabilities and what the nation needs to prosecute war. General Rita Aragon, Secretary of Military and Veterans Affairs, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much.